Hello there. Welcome to Escape in a Motor Today we're in Bath. Enjoying driving round Bath, dear? Yeah, it's alright. <laughs> it's a bit up and downy, especially when Satnam decides to do a short run. <laughs> oh, that's inconsiderate. <laughs> World Heritage Site Bath is known as a great spa town of Europe. Ebenezer Terrace. It's rather apt, considering the season. In 60 AD, the spa city had the Latin name Aquisulis, which translates as the Waters of Sulis, a Celtic deity worshipped before the arrival of the Romans. Excuse this dreadful zoom in, but I'm just trying to highlight the youth hostel sign. I was going to say I saved the day in this situation today. <laughs> <laughs> but I remembered that there was a free parking space by the youth hostel that Indy, Etty and myself have stayed in when we went to the Roman baths a few years ago. And I remembered it was quite a nice walk down through some fields and past some, uh, the canal and the locks. And we'd just driven around thinking, oh, I've got no time, no time to do anything. And there was a space just outside the youth hostel. So we'd managed to park in Bath for free. Amazing! But we've just got a bit of a walk ahead of us. So if you're ever struggling to park in Bath, we suggest you parking just outside here and you can walk down through the Bathwick fields. Having parked up, we walked down a National Trust owned misty Bathwick fields, a lovely path with cows to our left and a perfect vantage point over the city with its famous architecture made from Bath stone, a limestone that gives Bath its characteristic appearance. The famous Georgian architecture includes the Royal Crescent, assembly rooms and circus. Kennet and Avon Canal is 200 years old and it's a great way to reach the city. The walk really is beautiful with some stunning buildings. And the boys found the lock systems really fascinating. I'm not stunned with that. <laughs> yeah, the lock's filling up. So it levels it out. So boys, these are man-made canals for transporting goods. In the olden days, obviously they're just leisure boats now. As we walked along, as well as discovering Phoenix needed a wee, we all realised it was absolutely Baltic. And with no hats or gloves, the cold soon became too painful to deal with. So we headed into town. This is the beautiful Pulteney Weir and Bridge. It reminded us of the Rialto Bridge in Venice. Interestingly, it was the scene of Javert's suicide in the 2012 film version of Les Miserables. And Russell Crowe plays that part. You won't do. <laughs> <laughs> what are you do? What are you do? Some mad. Someone might throw me some money in a minute. <laughs> Duck and sun pink. Bath Abbey was founded in the 7th century and here it is beautifully lit up for Christmas. We can't talk about baths without mentioning the public baths and they were used until the 5th century AD when Roman rule in Britain ceased. The Mendip Hills provide the water source which percolates down to as deep as 4,300 metres. The water is heated to between 69 to 90 degrees centigrade via geothermal energy, i.e. heat from the centre of the earth. This means it's the warmest geothermal spring in the UK. There's the abbey all lit up. And just behind those walls over there are the Roman baths. But we're not here for that. We're here for Primark, can't we? <laughs> to get these kids <laughs> gloves and hats. Well, nice hat, to... Mummy. Just waiting for Daddy to come out of here to get some gloves because it's so cold. Where are you, Daddy? Somewhere deep in Primark. Mind you, I might regret this hat decision. Feeling a bit silly now. After sorting out our gloves and hats, it was time to take a wander around the festive Christmas market. According to many Google searches, Bath is the number one Christmas location to go. However, 
On this Sunday, three weeks before Christmas, I found it unbearably busy and it was impossible to browse as the crowd pulled us along like a riptide. <laughs> wow, that was busy. Yeah. I've got them in the move, I'm in the move some cider now. Yeah, I was a bit worried you weren't going to survive. <laughs> we reckon it's probably a lot more pleasant on a weekday and better for parking. That said, the lights and the many street entertainers gave the place a real buzz. Bath has so much to offer. The Roman Baths, the Jane Austen Centre, the American Museum, the Fashion Museum, the Museum of Bath at Work, the Holborn Museum. Yeah, yeah, we get Number the one idea, Daz. Okay. 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 Museum of East Asian Art. <laughs> We're a little bit worried. We're just going on to our next destination. It's taking us through to the centre of Bath and we've just noticed some clean air zone signs. And looking up online, our registration number is a £9 a day charge, but we still don't know whether we're in the clean air zone or not. So we're going to have to look at the map and see whether we've traversed it at all. Well, it seems that we did drive through the middle of bar. So all that smug, joyful, we're parking for free earlier was short-lived. <laughs> we just paid £9 to park in the bath clean air zone. And if we take parking into consideration, actually we did okay. And had we parked in the middle of bath and paid, we would have also had to pay the clean air charge for car parks who were right in the middle of Bath. So it could have been a really expensive couple of hours. Even though it was very beautiful, it was very, very busy. So it's worth thinking about if you ever come to Bath at Christmas time, the weekend you're going to be met with a sea of people having a jolly nice time, but it is a sea. You have to just let yourself go along with the flotsam and jetsam. We've paid, we're legal, but we're a little bit annoyed with ourselves for not finding out about that clean air zone because we have one in our home city. We arrived at Whitemead Forest Park in Lydney in the Forest of Dean just after 7pm. What a super place! £18.50 for the night, including the dog, and we've got access to the swimming pool, we've got entertainment. It's fabulous! So it's about quarter past seven, and I know filming in the dark doesn't always work on this phone. You can see our van in the back there with some Christmas lights. I've just come out to find the toilets that are on the map. I have to say, they're amazing. They're like these little pods that also have kitchen areas. So how cool is that? This place is pretty cool in the dark, so I imagine tomorrow it's going to be amazing. The complex was so festive inside and out, with lots of pretty lights, and also it had a great bar and well-stocked shop. So Daz has connected to the electricity, He's had a little wander around parts of the site and said it looks really nice. I'm really looking forward to having a wander tomorrow and showing you the facilities because for £18.50 a night, we're really, really impressed. Now we want to stay for a little bit longer tomorrow because it's Daz's birthday. So at 4pm we're going to leave and to stay all day and use the facilities, which include a swimming pool, it's just an extra £9. I don't think we've ever stayed anywhere so cheap and we're surrounded by ancient woodland. Now it's 730 and I don't know whether making a very basic roast dinner is a very good idea, but we all definitely need to eat something before we settle down for the night. You can see I've also got my scarf and coat on. I'm quite nervous about how cold it's going to be tonight. Everybody's got slipper socks and we've got lots of blankets and lots of sleeping bags and Sammy's got his extra pyjamas too. So fingers crossed we won't freeze tonight. I don't think that's too bad for a very rushed effort. <laughs> Christmas lights. There's a missing ingredient to this uh, festive pre-birthday scene. It's a beer. There you go, dear. Cheers. It, it could be more comfortable. Granted, Sammy is taking up the space where the table would be. But uh, happy birthday for tomorrow, nonetheless. Happy birthday, Eve. Well, good morning. It is Monday. The 5th of December, we're waking up in the Forest of Dean. It was a beautiful, quiet night. There's something to be said for sleeping in ancient woodland. 
in a lovely park. All you can hear are the birds this morning. And it was so dark. I used to stay in bed until 7.30. I guiltily got up to give Sammy a walk this morning and to make sure that he has some time to do his bits and bobs. There was a, a church bell that rang at midnight because we just got into bed because we said, happy birthday to Dad. Um, and then unfortunately, I heard it again at 4 a.m. because poor Phoenix at 3.30 needed a wee and it was so dark, couldn't see anything. And then we had to get the torch on to try and get him back into his sleeping bag. And by that time I was wide awake and there were a few expletives which I did apologize for. So yeah, I was awake at 4 a.m. listening to, I think it was the dawn chorus, maybe, I, maybe it was a bit early. Anyway, I'm enjoying the solitude of walking around this lovely park and uh, I think Sammy is too. And of course it's Daz's birthday today, so he's got the day off, even though the children haven't, but they will be going to the swimming pool at some point. I mean, the main complex is really impressive. There's a swimming pool in there, and then there's crazy golf, but there's some beautiful Christmas decorations too. And I love the fact that there are a lot of toilet blocks that look like little camping pods. I'd be happy to sleep in that. Look at that. They've got a giant redwood here, and it really is giant. Oh, there's a fire alarm going on in the background. They were introduced to Europe from California in the 1800s, I believe. And the world's biggest tree is a giant redwood. And they can live for 2,000 years. That's pretty impressive. And this trunk is mighty. Wow, that's incredible. So you can also stay in lodges here. And they look very festive. Everyone seems to have a, a Christmas tree with lovely red lights that I've seen twinkling in the windows at night time. Then there are camping pods as well. They look rather large and they're dotted around in the woods. But I rather like where the motorhomes are positioned on the meadow because it's furthest away from the main road. I spy a field of sheep over there, Sammy. Have you spotted the sheep? I've stumbled upon the drinking water and I've stumbled upon the grey waste disposal. That's quite nice. They've got drinking water as a tap and drinking water with a hose connector, which makes life easy for some motorhomes. And of course, the all important black waste disposal. That's quite industrial really. It's even got a gate and a very, very large looking toilet. That's like a toilet for a giant. But yeah, no chance of splashback there. I think that's the best one I've seen so far. Got some caravans. Yeah, I prefer the position of our motorhome up on the meadow. Now the hard standings are all beautifully flat. You've got your electric connectors there. Oh, I've stumbled upon the play park. I think the kids will be coming here later because it looks like a really good one. I think that is the swimming pool in the background. And over to my right, you seem to have a pond. And beyond that, some very nice looking Swiss chalets. Let's go and have a look, Sammy. This is a larger toilet block, but they've also got lovely, beautiful, clean sinks outside. Three sets and then information about all the activities that are going on. And I was surprised to see the amount of things that are going on in December, including Christmas treasure hunts. And there were some activities yesterday, including an elf school, which we just missed out on. Now on the other side, we've got recycling facilities, more bins. It really is pristine. It sounds like I'm being sponsored for this place, but I'm not, I just really like it. Little lodges just for two. I honestly don't know what we would do with ourselves. It was just Dad and I on holiday in a little lodge. I think we'd probably be drink, doing a lot of drinking. <laughs> this place really is expansive. I'm just walking through the third motorhome and camping pitch area. It's enormous. I think these woodland lodges feel very Christmassy. I think when they've got their little lights on at night time, the Christmas tree red lights, oh, just creates that sense of festive cheer. Oh, there's even more down there. Golly. Just moved in for the bin man. He's doing a great job going around the whole site. <laughs> at exactly the same time as us. But I just noticed they've planted this nice hedgerow along here. And there's a sign about things you could find in a hedgerow too. Now they said phone signal is not great around the park, but we haven't struggled too much. Now and again it dips out. But they've actually got a number of these yellow phones throughout the park where you can dial an emergency number. I think that's really, really good. Excellent facilities. I cannot fault this place. I'm so glad we found it. We stumbled upon this place scanning through pitch up because we needed a stop off before we headed up to the west coast of Wales. 
and this felt like almost direct. We had to go up a little bit, but actually the Forest of Dean is somewhere we've never been before. And quite a few people said, oh, you're gonna really love it there. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to having some walks today. And I'm hoping that I can persuade Daz to come and have a little solo sauna whilst I'm looking after the dog. Oh, that looks really nice. It's huge. These jacuzzis look nice too. And there's the steam room. Yes, I think this is a very good place to have a birthday. Oh, Sammy, do you want to have a drink? They've got drinkies for doggies. Do you want to have a drink, Sam Sam? He's thinking about it. You're not sure? It's like me. I always worry about free things as well, Sammy. <laughs> he wants to go in. It's probably because it's warm. I don't think you can go in, Sammy. You can go and see Father Christmas. He's got a grotto in there. And it's £10 person. We are going to see Father Christmas next week, so I think we can skip that. It's Adventure Golf 2, but I think it would cost about £25 for our family to play Adventure Golf today. So I think we will skip that. Love that bench. That's very cool. And look, they've got some old dead wood and a little bee house. Look at these lovely decorations. These look very, very effective at night time. And first prize for Christmas outfit goes to Mummy. <laughs> Bee looks stunning and brave in her onesie. Christmas onesie. Yeah, good on her. Here she comes. Quiet everyone, look busy. How rude. Anyway, we'll leave it there for today, but we'll see you next time and you can see how we surprise the kids with the next stage of our road trip. Oh, and something rather alarming happens in the motorhome. Slightly worrying is setting off an alarm. <laughs>